Mr. Grandson of Ray Thought. Welcome to the School of Marvelous Light. It's chilly morning. Hope you all are doing well, little flock. I know in life that there are things that have negatively affected you. Things that have even devastated you. But we also hear the master say, be of good cheer. He often reminds us to be in good spirits. He never told us, be sad, <laughs> worry, be stressed out. He told us the opposite of that. Not to be stressed out, not to worry. And honestly, we were destroyed for lack of knowledge. We didn't know the truth. And because we didn't know the truth, we suffered devastation, suffering, sadness, and we couldn't enter it into that. We couldn't enter into that good cheer he was talking about or that joy that he was always talking about. We couldn't. And it was because we were ignorant of the truth. But as he said, once you know the truth, it will make you free. The truth does the work. And today, little flock, I want to remind you all to let the truth do the work in your life. Your flesh existence is a lie. So you need to accept that. Your flesh existence is not the truth. If it was, then Yahusha wouldn't have said, flesh and blood can't inherit to the kingdom of heaven. It can't inherit it. He doesn't lie to you. But he said flesh and blood can't inherit the kingdom of heaven. And because of lack of knowledge, you don't know the kingdom of heaven. You think the kingdom of heaven is a place and not a state. But I say unto you, it's a state. People think it's strange when I speak the way that I speak about who I am and what's happened in my life. But that's because they don't have knowledge of the truth. They stay ignorant of it and deny the power of the truth. It's the same thing that we've been reading all of these days about the children of Israel complaining and murmuring and doubting the truth that they were sustained, that they were safe, that they were a blessed people, that they were handpicked by Abba himself. For some reason, they couldn't understand that that was enough. That Abba loves them. For some reason, they didn't think that that was enough. Show me you love me. Prove it. Do something. And then when he does do something, then they still doubt it. And it's that way in life. It's the same thing that we have all gone through. We've all been mistreated because of our lack of knowledge of why we were mistreated. Not understanding that the greatest love of all, which is our Father, was mistreated in like fashion. And if we are one with the Father, then we will suffer in like fashion. And some reason, the people that are ignorant of that don't understand what one with the Father is. Christ said, if you shall suffer with me, then you shall reign with me. But when you suffer, you have no knowledge of why. So you're going, why? See? Instead of, I know why. <laughs> so I rejoice. You're reminding, you're mistreating me because you're reminding me that I'm one with the Father. I'm being treated like Yahusha was because the flesh life is a lie. Lies are vapors. What does he say about man's life? It's a vapor. Here today, gone tomorrow. Truth never fades. Truth is not a vapor. Truth is everlasting. Truth is eternal. So if you don't have truth, then you die. And you want to be set free from death. That's why they were proclaiming, death, where is your sting? We have gotten the victory. See? And I told you, what is, the, what is death? It's the flesh mind. Remember, you live in a world where lies are truth. 
where evil is good. Remember, that's the world that you live, the flesh world you live in. That's what they say. So everything that they've taught you about heaven, hell, angels, demons, Yahusha, it's all a lie. And if it's a lie on one level, it's a lie on every level. If it's true on one level, it's true on every level. So if they lied to you about a false image of Yahusha, then they've lied to you about everything. Even the Romans have a saying, lie in one, lie in all. See? If you lie in one place, then everything you said is a lie. We can't trust you. We can't trust nothing you say. If you lie to me once, that's what they think. See? So then all of this attention you're giving to a lie is what's killing you because it's that's the carnal mind is death and it's not subject to Abba's ways so all it thinks about is how the, it's personal stuff and selfish things the beast is selfish it only wants what it wants for itself just look at a beast and tell me if I'm telling you some lies when a beast finds something to eat and he's eating it when a different kind of animal comes over there, or maybe even one of his own kind, he doesn't care. But when somebody else comes over there to get him a morsel off of it, let's say it's a lion. The lion killed a zebra, and he's chowing down on it. And here come a few hyenas. You think the lion's just going to sit there, keep eating, and let the hyenas get their piece and start eating their pieces off? You think he's going to do that? Or you think he's going to attack those hyenas to get them up off of his food so he can have it all to himself? What do you think? I've seen a pack of wolves uh, take down a caribou. Six, seven wolves. And they started to eat the caribou. And in the midst of them eating this caribou, there was a little coyote, female coyote. And she had a few little cubs. And she hadn't been able to find any food. So she was very hungry. So when she saw the wolves catch that caribou, she had been following the wolves, hoping she can get bits off of the things that they hunt and take it back to her cubs. Well, they killed the, the caribou, and she goes over to get her a piece, but when she got over there, the wolves attacked her viciously and ripped that coyote into pieces. They each got a mouthful. All of them had their mouth clamped down on that coyote, just pulling until she ripped into pieces. And then they went back to eating their meal. So do you see the nature of a beast? Do you see that? The wolf didn't say, we're big as hell, strong as hell. This little female coyote has these little babies. So let's give her a piece of the caribou so she can take it back to her cubs and feed her family and feed herself. We're not gonna eat the whole entire thing. We're gonna eat till we're done and we're gonna leave the rest. So why don't we just give her a piece? No, kill that bitch. That's the way the world is. No compassion. No thoughtfulness of another. So you, have, you are the image of a beast. Everybody's so worried about some physical thing. God is not physical. He's spiritual. His words are spirit and life. Everything he does is spirit. He says, not by power, nor by might, but by my spirit. That's invisible. So his work is done in an invisible place. Where is the invisible place? Inside you. Everything outside of you is visible, correct? That's why Christ said the kingdom of heaven cometh not with outward observation. Which means when you're facing a circumstance that seeks to harm you, tempt you, test you, anything. To pull you out of your state of happiness. Your state of joy. That's what it's trying to do. Then you have a choice in that moment to either deal with it with your fleshly mind. Or deal with it, deal with, it with the mind of Christ. Scripture says let this mind be in you that was in Christ. So if you say you follow Christ and you don't have the mind of Christ, then you're a liar. You don't, you're just a liar. If, you're not, if you don't have the mind to when you're around your brothers to wash their feet, then you don't have the mind of Christ. You're just a liar. If you don't have the mind to sacrifice putting that food in your mouth to hand it to somebody that's less fortunate to you, then you don't have the mind of Christ. 
Y'all think that when that boy had those few fish and those few loaves, that when he broke it, it immediately turned to a million pieces in his hand. It's not what happened. The point is, it said he broke it. He gave thanks, he broke it, and then he gave it. He didn't put it in his mouth. Do you see that? So when the people witnessed him give that bread to the people after he broke it, then they thought in their own heart, he pricked their hearts when they was like, wait a minute, I got something I can give. I can do that too. I can share too, first. We got a whole group of a thousand people. So let's make sure we do this decently and in order. Who needs to eat first? The elders, the children, and the women. Y'all understand that? Elders, children, and the women first. Then the weak men, the frail men, then the strong men. And the strong men are the servants who deliver those things to the elderly, the children, the lame, the sick, the widows, the fatherless. Before they fill themselves, because I guarantee you, brother, you will be a strong man if you seek to put food in another's mouth instead of your own that day. And you do like Christ. He took no thought. He was feeding people every day, whether they could see it or not, because it's invisible, his feeding. But when you hear him speak to you, you're getting fed and you know you are. So when you go to a restaurant, you'll leave that man a tip. And if it's very good, you'll leave him a big ass tip. In the flesh, but in the spirit, you don't put anything there because you don't understand you're receiving anything because it's invisible what's happening. It's happening inside because that's where the kingdom is. You have to be speaking to somebody who's changing and transforming the way you deal with yourself and others. When you go forth in your life, you're hearing their words in the back of your head, reminding you, poking you back onto the path. That's how you know you're dealing with somebody in the truth. Hush up, boy. Hush up, boy. Hush up, boy. I'm talking. Hush up, boy. I'm talking. <laughs> But that's the thing. When you're facing a circumstance, you're dealing, dealing with it by sight. Okay? Well, then you're doing it wrong. <laughs> and it's that simple. But for lack of knowledge, you think you're doing it right. The truth makes you free. You should always feel free if you're living in the truth. Because like I told you, the end result is one with the Father. That's the kingdom of heaven. How could it not be? Abba resides in heaven, correct? So if you are one with him, then where do you then where do you reside? Yep, because it ain't outside of you, it's inside of you. That's what he told you. You gotta climb that to the, you gotta climb to the top of that holy mountain within yourself. You gotta come out of those lower passions of that root of your body down there in that red, worshiping red, lust, gluttony, sloth, everything that red dragon is telling you with those seven heads. You're down in the pit, like I've told you. You gotta swim up to the top, back to the surface, so that you can walk on the sea of glass. I got the victory over that fleshly mind. Each stage I passed, and I finally arrived to the top of the mountain. And now I'm with the Father face to face. There you go. And what, what do you mean face to face? I am. That's truly one, as strange as it may sound. That's truly being one. Because think about what I'm saying. There's a husband and a wife. Think about this. And you go to that woman and you say, okay, her husband is named Tom Morrison. Now, you talk to her. Her name is Shaniqua Johnson Morrison. Okay, that's not actually the same person. That's not actually the same person. But if you say, that's Mr. and Mrs. M Morrison. Oh, that's Mr. and Mrs. I forgot his first name. John Morrison, whatever the hell I said. <laughs> oh, no, that's one person. John Morrison, which one? The Mr. or the Mrs.? Ain't that interesting? Is John Morrison here? Which version? The female or the male? Because the fe female and the male are one. They're married. So which one you want to talk to here? <laughs> the thoughts and the feelings of your being 
That's the kingdom of heaven. Those two got to be married and agree in one and make peace between the two. Because when the husband and the wife ain't getting along, the house isn't happy. Your body. Your psychological body, your soul. It's not happy. It's laboring for something it can never grasp. That's why the scriptures told you it in a parable. Vanity of vanities. All is vanity. All done under the sun is vanity. When you open your eyes, everything when you see it is vanity. And you can see it. You can literally see it decaying each day. They build it. It's new. You drive by 30 years later. It's not even there anymore. It's not even there. It's just the plot where it used to be. And we act confused when we see that as if we can build something eternal still that lasts through the ages. <sighs> when you die, you don't even know what's being said or done with that thing that you spent your whole life building. You have no more partaking in that. So then it's about time that we all fo focus on what's most important, which is dying to the flesh mind so that the spiritual mind can give us life and peace. The only reason the words that I'm saying are, are not uh, persuading you is because of your unbelief, not mine. I know the truth, so I'm free. I'm free. Because I know the truth. Abba, you deal with it. Now you got to know Abba. You got to know his name so that you don't blaspheme it. And then you understand what he's been telling you the whole time once you know his name. You see how much you've hated yourself. That's what I'm saying. You, you start to see how much you've neglected yourself. You see it. And I want to ask you all a question. Do you think you can properly love another if you are not properly loving yourself? Do you think you can keep his commandment? You have to love your neighbor as you love yourself. The same way you love yourself is the way you love your neighbor. And you can't get around that, right? Only in which capacity you can do something for yourself, you can do for others. That's simple. So you have to start with the inside world when you're dealing with a circumstance. Jump out of your flesh mind and your flesh body with the circumstance and look at it as that man or that woman that you are standing there dealing with it and have compassion on them. Do you understand what I'm saying to you, little flock? I'll say it again. I'll try to break it down as simplistic as I can. When you're dealing with something and you get some bad news of some sort, you're going to feel that adrenaline rush in your heart rate and your anxiety increase inside yourself. When you feel that, I want you to take a moment to look at the circumstance as a friend would. So be your friend in that moment and say, whatever your name is, let's say your name is John. So John, you get some bad news. This is happening. You're fired from your job. Now you can't feed your wife and your kids. Panic sets in. Okay, that's not the truth. That's not the truth. Because this physical labor is flesh. This job I'm looking at is flesh. Oh, I opened my eyes to go there. So it's temporary and it's a lie and it's, and, it's, and it's a vapor. So that's not what's sustaining my life. So there's no need in me acting like it does by panicking, like I'm losing something. I'm not. I am gaining something better in return. That's what a friend would tell you. A real friend would say that. Oh, brother, don't worry. You're going to get something better in return. That's why Abba took that away. And be honest with yourself. Were you really happy there? Well, no, I really wasn't happy there. Okay, well, let Abba give you something that make you happy to do. That's how you need to talk to yourself. Like a friend would do. Like a husband, would, a loving husband would talk to his wife. His wife goes through something. She's hurt. He holds her tenderly in his arms. And he comforts his wife. Baby, don't worry about it. Our father got us. He will always provide for us. He promised us this. And I don't know about you, but I'm not going to sway. I'm not going to be double-minded, but I'm going to stay the course. And I'm going to be the stronger vessel.
like Abba told me I am. And I'm going to hang on for both of us and stand on the top of this water. If you got to lay down on the surface to get some rest, lay down next to me. But I'm going to stand watch. I'm not going to let her sink. You see that? What's wrong with talking to your wife that way, little flock? What's wrong with talking to your friend that way, little flock? So what's wrong with talking to yourself that way, little flock? Love today, everything, including yourself. And watch your circumstances change. Watch your joy increase. Watch your good cheer spread across your countenance like a ripple going across an ocean until it goes all the way across to the other side. A cause has to have an effect. It will ripple until it ripples all the way to the end. Which means everything that you think and feel sends a ripple effect out. And when it, the tide comes back in, it will return what you sent. I'm sad. Return sadness to that person. They're asking for it. They're praying for it. They're calling on the name of the Father to give sadness. They don't know they're calling on his name. They think they're talking about their flesh body, their flesh existence, because they're ignorant of the truth. And they don't believe that they are anything. Well, then who breathed your life in you that made you living? Who did that? So then whose breath are you breathing right now? Yours? You didn't have a breath. It was given to you as a gift. And if he's allowing you to still partake of it, then don't that mean that he loves you? Don't that mean that he's shown you grace? Don't that mean that he's been that compassionate friend in your life, no matter what you went through? Doesn't that mean that when you were down and out and felt like the end of the world and you couldn't go another damn step, don't you think he came and he consoled you and comforted you and says, I am with you. I would have gathered you like a hen does her chicks. Most of you haven't even watched a hen gather her chicks. But if you watch it, you see how beautiful it is to see that all those little baby chicks fit under the wings of that hen and you don't even see them. They are completely covered by the wings of their mother. Coyote thought he had a chick. He started running. They ran up under their mama. They was like, wait a minute. Where's all those little succulent little chicks that I was chasing around? I don't understand what's going on. And while he was thinking that, the rooster came and pecked his ass right in his booty cheeks. Ding! Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know the coyote don't never get no good luck. <laughs> Y'all seen Wally Coyote, he don't never catch Roadrunner, no matter what he do. Dude getting Acme bombs and Acme equipment sent to his house to cave and shit. <laughs> Nigga hitting the bomb, pressing it, just blowing his ass up. <laughs> oh man, y'all remember when he used to be on a cliff, he had a Roadrunner right at the very edge. He'd take the saw and cut it because he think the Roadrunner gonna fall, but the whole mountain fall, the little piece of rock sitting up there with the Roadrunner on it. <laughs> <laughs> that little wild Lee coyote. So y'all understand that today? He's an ever-present help. I am his. So let him deal with it. When somebody come to you, you're this. Okay, God, I'll just tell him what you are. Yeah, I know he's going to hate me. I know he's going to throw stones because he's ignorant and doesn't know what I'm saying. He think I'm talking about this flesh body he's looking at. The flesh profited nothing, but I guess you ain't spiritually minded and don't know that yet. In other words, you don't know the truth, so you're not free. You're in bondage. What are you in bondage to? Wrong thought. And why are you in bondage to it? Because you believe people. God said, let every man be a liar and let God be true. So if a man talking to you and his words are not the, the words of God or his words are not interlaced with the words of God, what do I mean? Say a person says, Hey, brother, you need to love your neighbor as yourself. That's God's word. So then you can believe it. Even though a man told it to you, it's God's word, not man's word. Now, let's say a guy comes and says, Hey, man, you know, you say, what do you, what do you think that a person should do with their life? And this person says, well, you know, I just think people should just do right to each other and take care of each other. It's not necessarily the word of God, but it interlaces. It means the same thing. So we look at the heart. What does it mean? What is intentions? He's saying, take care of one another. Same thing Christ said, even though he didn't use exactly the same words. Do you see what I'm saying? 
So if it ain't that, then don't listen to it. Don't give it no credence and don't give it none of your energy. Man is wicked. He's falling. So the things that come, come out of his mouth are wicked and falling. They're not coming from the Father. You understand that? So like I said, I would just advise you to come back to the truth in those moments of the Father's truth. And when you speak the Father's truth, it benefits you. So somebody says something simple. You're stupid. I am smart. Ain't that right, Abba? Ain't you? But they think you're talking about your flesh self. That's the wisdom and the beauty of it all. Be wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove. Because ain't that that? Ain't that that? And ain't I'm that? He said I am that. <laughs> See, Lord, I'm Israel.